Hey guys, welcome back to another Confusion Quickie. Hey! Now today I want to talk about resolution independent masking. <laughs> Sounds pretty damn cool, but it's actually just cool. Okay? So what you see here is a shape with different resolutions. Now on the left, we have this very rough shape and uh, you can also see that I have some sort of a grid going on here. And on the right side or in the middle, we have this finer grid. And on the right side, we have a high resolution image. It's thousand by thousand. This one is 32 by 32. This is 16 by 16. So now to all of you who want to dive into motion graphics, I'm actually, as be honest, I'm not a motion graphics guy. Okay, so for all you motion graphics geniuses out there, correct me if I'm talking nonsense. Now let's get started here. Let me let me delete this shape and I'm going to bring in a new shape. Okay, and I'm going to hook this in here and I'm going to invert this so that we can see something. Okay, now I'm going to bring in a polyline here. And to just to demonstrate you, I'm going to hook this into the thousand by thousand background and invert this. And suppose we want to create, uh, let's, what the heck, let's go with a rectangle. Okay, I'm just going to lay in a simple rectangle. I hit shift O to close the rectangle. Now you already see the problem. Now, how can we actually make this rec a perfect rectangle? I mean, okay, we can just second guess here, but that's not perfect. So what we would need is a snap function and the grid. So ideally we want to adjust the grid size and then we want to snap to the grid. That's what we are used to in other applications. But in Fusion, there, as I said, there is no 2D grid. So there is a snap function here. You can see here it says snap. And if you open the um, drop up, not drop down, then you can see it says pixel boundaries and pixel centers. But you can already assume what this is uh, all about. It's about pixel snapping and not about the grid snapping. Okay. But you can forget about this anyway because in Fusion 8, this thing has a bug. So if I may demonstrate to you, I'm going to try to move this. Here you won't see a difference. But if I'm going to move this here, you can see that this thing is going crazy. So this is out. So what can we do here? Now you can already see here this grid and you might wonder what kind of grid this is. Now this is actually a pixel grid and you can find this in options here show pixel grid. The thing is here this thousand by thousand image is too big that we won't see the pixels. It means we have to zoom in. It's like Google Maps. You zoom in and all kinds of miracles happen. Okay so this is out as well. Now what I did here is the simple trick with the different resolution resolution of those background tools. Okay, as I said, here we have this 1000 by 1000, 32 by 32 and 16 by 16. And what this actually allows us is to see the grid. You might wonder, okay, but you want a mask for this resolution. Now the thing is, when I select the mask here, you can see that it actually has the same size in all these patches here. It's it's this very exact size here. Okay, so now you already guessed it. Now I can prove to you that now that I hooked the polyline into all the three background tools, you can see that we have the shape just in lower resolution, but it's exactly the same size. You might want to turn off the smooth resize here because if you don't turn it off, you get this blotch here. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I still like to see the pixels. I'm a pixel lover. Yeah, it's because, you know, when I started at the age of 14 or something, I, I used to pixel on the Amiga 500. You might not know, but this is the most, this was the most amazing home computer ever made. Yeah, while well, the PC was all like... The Amiga was like... Hey! Okay, yeah, so I'd like to uncheck this. Pixel love. Oh, yeah. Let's do something, some serious shaping here. Okay, so I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger here and I'm gonna zoom in. Now this, it's, of course it's not perfect and it's not a snapping. We wanna turn this off, otherwise we get brainwashed here. Um, so it's not perfect, but the thing is, if you zoom in very closely, you can place it quite precisely. And on the right side, you can already see this thing adjusting. Now, the funny thing is, I don't know if you have realized, 
that these are actually the pixels here, yet we can move between pixels. I think that's what they call sub-pixel accuracy or something, I don't know. <laughs> now let's say we want to make the shape a little bit more interesting. We can go in here, we can drop in some more points, something like this. Now I'm not going too precise now just to save time. Okay, and then I drop in another one here. I'm going to push this out about here. And what about this? And what the heck, let's make something round here. For example, let's see if we find the right, let's say the middle of this line and the middle of this line here, something like this. And let's say we want to make this boy, this bad boy round. We could delete this point and then we do the same here. Remove the handles about here and back. Now the thing is, if you want to make finer adjustments, you can go to the second grid, for example here. Let's say, oh, suppose I want to have something here, something like this. Yeah. Okay, and then finally in our high resolution image, you can see that we have our final shape. Resolution independent masking. Now for some of you guys, this different sized background tool method might be too pain in the butt. You know too complicated now there's another way you can i mean there are many ways you can do things in fusion so but i want to show you another way how you can actually have a, a more interactive grid okay so you can already see i have a renderer placed in here i have the background tools here that i've created before we basically don't need these we can take just the high resolution one and that is hooked into the background of a merge the first thing we need is a shape 3d tool you drop this in and you drop this into the viewer. The first thing you do is you switch to front view. Usually this is in perspective view. You switch to front view. And then in the, in the shape 3D, you check the wireframe and you know already what I'm going to do. Hey, so easy to guess. What you do now is you drag and drop the 3D camera shortcut right into the viewer and bang, Fusion creates a camera for you which points straight to the plane. Now we hook this into the renderer and we render this out and see what we get here. Now important thing is that the renderer is also uh, set to a OpenGL renderer. So, but what is this now? I mean, let's hook this into the foreground of the merge and bang, you can already see, now we have our grid here. Now the cool thing about this method is that if you go into the shape 3D, and you adjust the subdivision levels. Hey, look what's happening. We have a perfect, awesome grid here. Okay, now we just need a snap function. Mm. But unfortunately, I don't have this for you. Bing bong. Hey, we can activate the super sampling and then we reduce the super sampling rate to maybe five, three, and the one is almost like it's off. Yeah, maybe something like this. This should still be enough to place our points precisely here. Okay, something like this here, for example. Move this here, this one here, this one here, and so on and so on. You get the picture. Hey. Now again, there are many ways how you can make your own grid. You can even import an image of a grid and just rescale that up and down but but that will affect the thickness of them lines so but still there are many ways how you can uh, create your own grid i think with using the shape 3d here is one of the coolest methods okay but to some of you guys this is still not enough occasionally you want to use a multi-grid it means a grid with a finer grid in it and maybe another even finer grid in that fine grid. Now let me show you how you could do that. So here we already have this uh, 3D grid and we can basically use the same shape 3D and we just create another copy. We hook this in as well. And what we do now is we define about how big we want to have the fine grid. So let's say about 10 of these uh, boxes here. Um, it means I'm going to reduce the subdivision level to 10 or well, let's say 20 and i'm gonna bring down the size and let me just uh, adjust the color here let's make it yellow now the most difficult part about this method is to actually place the grid on your other grid so that it matches perfectly 
or nicely. Now, in our case, we could either now we can now you can see that the yellow grid is a little bit too small by hitting control and moving the slider, we can fine tune this value. And you can see that actually this looks already pretty good. But of course, now this shape is on the same height as this shape. And you might find this a little bit annoying or distracting that all these colors here. So we want to move this grid a little bit forward. Now, If I will move this forward now, you can see what happens. Actually, it moves closer or further away from the camera. This is because we have a perspective camera. Now to make this rock solid, we can switch this to autographic. Bang. Now, of course, the whole thing became smaller and we can counter act here by just scaling this up about something like this. Yeah. OK. Uh, actually, we need to be a little bit more or whatever. Something like this. Now, if you would move the yellow grid back and forth, you can see it comes right in front of the bigger grid without actually getting a perspective distortion. Now you have a tiny grid inside your grid. Ugh. And you could do this, you could go on and go on and create more grids. And uh, for example, let's say here you just need a rough shape, but you want to go precise in here. So you could use this multi grid technique here. Now, there might be a chance that you're super lazy. In that case, you can do the following. You see this little bin box here? If you click that and go to layouts, you will find this SE grid maker. Now, drop that into the flow and you're ready to go. OK, so this is like a preset of a grid. And well, I personally don't like to use it, <laughs> I tell you. Um, OK, so the way you control this thing is basically you adjust the size by using this gizmo here. And you can already see that if I scale this, the lines of the grid also become like thicker. Of course, you have adjustments here so that you can um, counteract the line thickness. But yeah, I mean, it's up to you. You decide. You decide. Ooh. OK, guys, this was just a few methods on how to create some grids. And I'm sure there are more. If I would to sit down and think about it, I would probably come up with more. Um, but I think this is enough. I don't know. You decide. Ooh. Now go and do some motion graphics action. My name is Vito. I'll see you soon. Until then, enjoy what you're doing. Ooh.